Hi, uh, that's not a bed pumpkin. It's just patterns. Welcome back to the Plies and Hellhounds channel. I'm your human host, Gabby. You can find me everywhere online as Gabigales and on my hand ID yarn at Plies and Hellhounds and PliesandHellhounds.com. Welcome back to another Sovember video. Um, I didn't know I was doing it this month or if it's a thing, but here we are. It's happening. Thank you, bud. We are a puppy <laughs> interrupted crafty channel coming to you from Central Connecticut. I have both the sleepy dogs here today. They just want to snuggle. It's a nice, like, gray November day, so chef's kiss. I don't want to do anything, but I also really want to sew a bunch. So this week, we are sewing with knits. With knits. I have the Moneta dress by Colette Patterns, and she's got three different versions. I am going to do the three quarter sleeve version and I've got my handy dandy knits for pirates classic pencil skirt pattern ready to go and we are going to break out my signature floral on black fabric for this. I'm so excited. I um, have been trying to weed out dresses that no longer fit me slash like one of my favorite dresses is so worn that it's basically completely see-through. So I do want to recreate that, but I have to go through my fabric stash to do that and or get more fabric, which is, we're trying to work through our stash right now with fabric stuff. So it's all, all fits in like, I have a um, like 1940s dresser that I need to fix clean. It, the like a varnish stain is like, sweating out of it. This is not a DIY channel, sort of. Uh, this is not a furniture DIY channel, but I do want to kind of like restore her to her glory. So I just need to figure out how to do that. But she holds all my fabric. Long story short, <laughs> she holds all my fabric and I do have a couple pieces hanging up in the closet. So I just want to like get my stash down so that she fits in there. And like, that's my fabric mm -hmm. stash capacity. So yeah, this is our fabric. I've made a t-shirt out of this, which I also have to fix today because I was playing around with the serger and it just did, the threads didn't catch all the way or something. So I'm just going to research the sides on that. And yeah, here we are. Uh, this is the plan. It is 11 o'clock in the morning. I have to go out and get some supplies. I am very low on black thread. I think I need a new twin needle because I don't know where mine is but I also need thread for it. So I figure if I have to go out and get thread and I have to get clear elastic. I think I could get away with like the black elastic that I have, but my record with sewing lately, I'm not here to tempt fate this time, this time. So yeah, that's the plan. Let's have another sewing day. Let's go. All right, step one of sewing is picking your sizes so i have a 31 inch bust and a like 33 inch waist so i'm doing the extra small bust and then bringing the waist bar part up to the large I don't iron my patterns every single time I use them, but I was trying to do everything right for this one. I was trying to be a good sewist. Uh, I iron them on like the lowest heat, no water. If I can, I'll put a towel over them just to really protect them, but that just was not working on this day. So it was just straight iron to pattern. And I always cut out the largest size on these like sewing patterns that aren't pdf that way if i need to make any adjustments later on i can and i have all the sizes already cut out
so to make sure that I have the correct size I will I have this like architect tracing paper that I use and you can pretty much see through it so I will trace out the pattern and use a French curve to kind of connect bringing the extra small bust out to the large waist that way it's a continuous line and it kind of mimics the actual pattern and then cut everything out. Hello, we're back. It is 2.30, 2.30. Gone to Joanne's, um, everything is cut out as we saw. Hi bud. And this is all I have left. So it is in, oh. thank you Audrey. A very long piece of fabric. She's She keeps going, but she's not like wide enough to really do anything with i might hold on to her oh it's not knocking my coffee because i feel like these pieces would be big enough for like uh, maybe like a pair of sleep shorts or something so the hoarder in me thank you depression generations um i'm gonna keep this <laughs> And, uh, you know, see what happens. I'll probably hold on to it and then in like two years do a stash clean out and be like, why do I even have this and get rid of it? But yeah, like I think I could do like a pair of sleep shorts with this. Could I do a skirt? I don't think there's a, I think this is the biggest piece, like this piece right here. Cause I think this piece is smaller cause I cut the pockets out of it. Yeah, this is too small to be a skirt, but maybe like a pair of sleep shorts or something. So I'm gonna hold on to it. I'm, my hair in my mouth. I'm gonna hold on to it and see what happens. Um, or get frustrated because I can't fold it and get rid of it. We'll, we'll see. So let's we'll just, but yeah, it is, uh, everything's cut out. So now I'm going to clean off my desk and set up my sewing machine. and start uh, attaching everything. And the good thing with the knits is you don't really have to press your seams. So I don't even have to set up everything, everything. Step three of this was forget that your machine has not been doing zigzag stitches properly. So here we are. I'm going to do some troubleshooting. I'm going to set a timer for like a half hour and see what I can figure out. Um, and go from there. Yeah, Audrey, maybe we just surge it. I don't know. I'm not like proficient enough in my serger to like do a whole garment like I'm still not very good at the tensioning and stuff so we'll see what happens yeah but so we're gonna try this oh wish me luck
So is this supposed to be... I think that's supposed to be there. There's this just access. I don't know if I can access the timing belt. I don't know. I would assume it's in here. I can do this on a car. I can't do this on a sewing machine, apparently. This is just the feed dogs and old washi tape. I think I need to get my machine serviced. Mm -hmm. I think the timing's off. Ooh, my bangs look bad. Um, from the three videos I've watched online, I think the timing is off, which happens. She's close to 10 years old. Um, she's never been serviced before. I've never gotten her like tuned up or anything. So I think this is just something that happens with machines. Um, I know that like when you, when you're like turning this guy to advance your needle, if you turn it backwards, that can cause it to go out of time too. And I'm sure I've done that over the past years. I'm a hundred percent sure that I've done that. Um, so yeah, now I'm just going to be Googling machine repair places near me. Ugh. Silvember is ending with a fizzle, I guess. This is kind of annoying, but you know, maintenance is unnecessary for machines. Sewing included. She a dust, she dusty. Oh, she a dusty girl. So yeah, I'm gonna put her back together and have a very short video, I guess. <laughs> That's frustrating. So I have a Singer Pro Finish Serger. This is the most I've ever done on it. I usually just use it to finish edges. I've never really used it to like sew things together before. So this was a big old learning curve and um, a big old practice on how to control the speed of a serger. Cause I feel like once you step on the pedal, it just goes as fast as it wants and it's a little bit terrifying. So this was a real big practice of controlling the fabric and controlling the speed of everything, but it worked. So we sewed the shoulder seams together. We sewed the um, sleeves into the armholes and then we surged up the side seams and down the arms and connected it. For pinning, I usually face my pins in towards my right hand, but for the serger, I faced like the head of the pin out towards my left and grabbed it significantly sooner than I would for a sewing machine just because I was so scared of getting it caught in the needles and breaking. And then I sat and YouTubed how to do an invisible hem on a serger. And I think I got it. I mean, I did, I did get it. I figured it out. It, uh, it was a lot of learning and it was way easier than I thought it was going to be. So this might, oh, this might be a new, uh, blind hem for me just in general for a lot of things. curious I am only using two threads on the serger I only have two cones of black thread and after I graduated from like the training colors of all four colors I haven't given more threads a chance yet but after sewing this dress I definitely I think I'm going to go in and get another cone and try for the three thread I've also been only using one needle 
most of this just because I wasn't, I'm not 100% sure how the tensioning goes. As you can see, I am having some skipped stitch problems here, but I figured it was easier to learn with just two threads at first. And then when you kind of get the feel for it, go up to three and then go up to four. Here we are attaching the pockets to the skirt. She does have pockets and they are in the pattern. This part was the most difficult. This is when I'm attaching the clear elastic to cinch in the skirt. It was uh, a struggle of making sure that there was tension on the elastic. So it kind of like up back into the fabric, but also that like the fabric was getting fed through everything. Actually, I lied. That was not the most difficult part. Okay, this is a terrible angle, but whatever. It is 412. I have been fighting with this serger for like two hours now. I'm literally, I'm at the connecting the bodice to the skirt. I don't know why it hates it. it it's fine on my test fabric and then it's just not locking on this fabric. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, I, I have no idea. I have no idea what it is. Um, I like, maybe I can straight stitch it, but I don't think that's going to be a good idea. I think that's just going to be a disaster. I've broken a needle. I've changed needles. Well, I changed needles and I broke that needle. So I broke a brand new needle. I really just have no idea and like the stitching that is there isn't staying like it's not secure so this is frustrating and my battery's gonna die this might have to go off for another week this is really annoying this is really annoying I fucking hate this I don't want to play anymore. I'm going to rip everything out. She's done. She did it. Um, she's completely serger made against my will, but she's there. Uh, I think if I were to do this again, and I definitely will, uh, I would raise 
the waistline just like half an inch like just a little bit she does sit like at my natural waist now but I think just like that little little bit more would be amazing yeah I haven't done the voiceover yet for like the sewing part so I, I'm not sure what I've talked about yet we'll see but yeah 100% would sew this again I'm gonna wear her all day see how she goes I don't know if I have any more knit fabric to make another one like right off the bat but it feels good to have another floral on black back in the wardrobe so, so yeah this is we're just gonna this is the end of November um until I can get my machine serviced. I really hope she can be. I really hope. So yeah, we're gonna start saving up for that, get her tuned up, get her retimed. And um, yeah, I do have sewing plans for next year. And I will go about those in another video, I think. I need to like collect all my brain thoughts. So here we are at the end of November. We got three sewn objects. Two of which I wear all the time, one of which I'm still, I, I, I try and wear, I just can't do the neckline, so I'm going to go back and readjust the neckline eventually. I just need a little bit of a break, I think. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the sewing journey with me. If you like this video and want to stick around, feel free to subscribe. We put out videos most Saturdays. I am currently doing Vlogmas, so I am vlogging 25 to 30 days in December, TBD. We'll see how we feel after 25 days. And, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.